Joining us in the studio today at 96.3 and Win TV are Kurt Anderson and Dave Sarna. They're here to talk about the upcoming Manawa Snowdio and Kurt's incredible daring attempt to break the world ground speed record on a snowmobile. Dave, do you want to begin? Sure. Well, thanks a lot, Justin, for having us in today. Um, I uh, am the track manager of the Manawa Snowdio that's coming up on February 15th and 16th in Manawa, specifically at Bear Lake Resort on Bear Lake, uh, about uh, five miles south of Manawa on uh, Highway 22. And uh, this is our 13th year of racing out there. And uh, we kind of pride ourselves in having about the only event in the nation, I believe, that runs four racetracks simultaneously. So uh, basically this year, uh, it's a two-day. It's Saturday and Sunday. We won't be racing evenings at times we've done that. Uh, but Saturday is basically everything on skis, which means we're, we have Pro Vintage Racing coming in. It's going to be on a third-mile oval track. Uh, we do a lake cross race, which is a slalom track that's roughly two miles long that uh, turns lefts and rights. And uh, we have about 75 racers coming in for that. And it's a, actually also an event where the average snowmobiler can go out in there and just see how well he can do. It's not a lot of high speeds, but it's a lot of maneuvering. And uh, you run, run commonly with about 80 other guys out there. And it's uh, actually, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we also will have the... A Wisconsin Kitty Cat Racers there, so we make a dedicated uh, short oval, small oval for those guys, and they're going to be out there, the kids. And then we also have radar runs. So if you're just curious on seeing how fast your snowmobile will go or your bike or your quad or just about everything we've had out there, I think a wheelbarrow even ran one time, uh, to see what speeds you can achieve, uh, we'll be out there. The race course there is 660 feet long, so uh, Saturday is all uh, skis and on Sunday we turn the program over to basically wheeled vehicles. So the uh, oval track now we rank welcome in Central Wisconsin Ice Racers Associations and those are guys that race motorcycles and quads uh, on the ice and on the on the oval track. And again, uh, we've got entry classes in that categories as well. So if you've never done this stuff before, you come out. These organizations have one day memberships. You pay ten to fifteen dollars. They'll get you in a class that fits your need and your skill level, and uh, they'll they'll get you out there in the track and. It's, it's a lot of fun, and it's very safely run as well. Uh, the Kitty Cat track uh, now gets converted over to lawnmower racing. We started introducing lawnmower, modified lawnmower racers last year, and we did indeed have racers from Florida to Canada that came to Manwood last year to race on this uh, Kitty Cat track. And so they'll be out there, and then uh, this year we're also – uh, introducing uh, mini bike racing. John Spence from the Simcoe Weekender has got a group of people, I guess, I think he told me last year they had 400 mini bikes that were involved with the uh, Weekender and Simcoe. And so he started uh, a group of ice racers on mini bikes. So those guys will be out there. Uh, we will be having the radar run track run again on Sunday. And that'll be open for bikes, sleds, quads, whatever you got. And this year, uh, we're inviting the Merrill Ice Drag Racers to come in and do some exhibition runs out there. So you'll see some of these uh, drag race ice cars that'll be out there. And the um, the bonus feature uh, that we're real excited about and the special for Sunday is we've invited in the Arctic Aero uh, that we were introduced to last year, basically through the Discovery Channel that called us. Uh, the week before the snow deal and said, can you guys make a one mile long, 100 foot wide ice track to host a world record attempt? And we were kind of like a little uneasy on all this. And we said it's possible, but, uh, you know, we need a serious commitment. And so they were real, real hot on coming in and doing a show out on Bear Lake and for this record attempt. And then in the process, uh, we were introduced to the team and the owner and driver uh, who we have with us today, Mr. Kurt Anderson. And he's out of Minnesota and he has built a rocket powered uh, dragster with uh, with skis on it, basically. And it was built uh, with the sole purpose of breaking the original or the record that's held now by a man by the name of Sammy Miller uh, out of New York that in 1981 went 247 miles an hour on ice. And Kurt is going to his plan is to one up this guy. So he's going to start from a standing start 
and he's going to be timed up to 1,000 feet, and he feels comfortable that at the end of that 1,000 feet, uh, he's going to be doing well over 247 miles an hour. And the rest of the track, uh, the, the remainder of the mile, is going to be bringing this thing back under control. So, Kurt, we'd like to welcome you here today. And um, he's visiting and setting up some of his his uh, prerequisites and logistics for the trip uh, that's coming up here in January to bring this rocket sled to Manawa. So I guess I'd like to say welcome uh, welcome to Wapaka and welcome to our area and and tell us a little bit more about what your attempt's going to consist of and uh, what you have in mind for that special day in February. Well, thanks, Dave and Justin. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to come to Manawa and, and break the world record on ice. That's, that's my goal. And it's something I, that I'm going to work hard to, to accomplish. So we're going to be coming uh, early February to kind of set up. We've got different waves of our team. Um, the first wave that comes in is going to be setting up the pit area, uh, the on-ramp and off-ramp to the lake, and really getting our pit area ready um, and start moving tools and, and getting our, the facilities ready to be able to get this car prepped and down the runway. And we're going to also be working on the runway itself to make sure that it's um, straight. Uh, the ice is the way, the way we need it. And so we'll be actively involved in the runway preparation as well. So I've <clears throat> I've gotten to know Kurt uh, pretty well over the last few months, and he's made trips here. And, and one thing that I was very uh, impressed by is uh, already midsummer, the hottest days of the summer, uh, he was in contact with us in the snowdio and said, listen, I want to come make trips there ahead of time. And I want to meet that meet with anybody that's anybody uh, that has concerns or questions or issues with this attempt. So uh, I know in our time together, we visit everybody from uh, Sheriff Wills to the DNR to uh, uh, you know, the fire department to the mayor of Manawa to lake owners to you name it, uh, to make sure that everybody is on board with what we're doing. And, um, yesterday was a trip down to Madison to actually get folks down there involved to help get the word spread, uh, not only just, uh, statewide, but region wide, uh, to get as many people here to witness this, this, uh, event that, that we're going to put together. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the lake is a, is like a public resource. And so when we're going to come into an area, we just need to make sure everybody knows, you know, what, what we're trying to do and what we need. Um, so for a small portion of this winter, we're going to have to, you know, um, have a, you know, a quiet runway for us to make our attempt on. So it, in my look at anything that we're doing for, you know, record type runs is you can't have too much preparation. I mean, we spend months to do a four second race. So that's what I'm here, and I've just been really happy with um, everyone I've met and, you know, how the whole area has welcomed this attempt. And I really am happy to partner with Dave on this, on this effort because he's, um, it's been fabulous just to, you know, un, you know, make sure there's no gray areas that um, when it comes to this stuff, you know, that's, that's what we need. Safety is number one. So maybe you can clarify for our viewers and listeners that this is actually a rocket engine in what started out as a top fuel dragster chassis, if I understand correctly, and you retrofitted skis underneath this thing, but it's not jet powered. It's not piston powered. It's powered by a hydrogen peroxide rocket. Is that right? Yeah, it's thrust driven. So there is nothing that, um, you know, it's not track driven. So it's a thrust driven vehicle that um, is, yeah, powered by 90% hydrogen peroxide. And what's really kind of fascinating for me about it is this fuel decomposes into steam. So it's really a steam generator. So the thrust that's coming out of the back is, is water and um, some extra oxygen. So it's pretty cool tech. So I guess to put it in perspective, when, you know, I'm a, a gearhead guy and a muscle car type fella. And so I, you know, I, I know Chevy engines and pistons and things like that. So I'm trying to wrap my arms around this rocket propulsion. And when I asked Kurt, uh, 
So, I mean, you know, put it into retrospect as far as the amount of power that this rocket produces, uh, you know, your remark to me was, well, if we took this car and basically stood it on end with the nose straight up in the air and pulled the trigger, this thing would shoot so far out of sight, you wouldn't even see it in space. So, I mean, there's no doubt a tremendous amount of thrust and G-force and pressure that you no doubt have to experience when this thing is is on that four seconds under the throttle. Yeah, the power is instantaneous. So um, the motor has 5,000 pounds of thrust, and that is, um, there's a short period that we have to heat the motor up. But once once we're past that and, and we're into arming the rocket and launching it, um, it's instant power uh, and will consume 18 gallons of fuel in under four seconds. So you know, all of the power, and that's given. So I can, I control the, the, the power of this thing so I can turn it up and turn it down. Um, but, you know, under the ideal conditions, we can, we can, can, you know, create all that energy in a really short amount of time. And that's what, that's what gets this thing moving. So I know this is not your first run with this thing, and maybe you could share uh, with our listeners here, you actually transported your team, your crew, your all your cargo, a ship container to Sweden and race this in Europe uh, before uh, ever even thinking about coming to Manawa or coming to the Snowdio. So can you tell us a little bit about that experience? That must have been really something special to to go there and shake the car down. Well, um, yeah. So I started building the Arctic Arrow in 2014, and I had learned about uh, an event in Sweden called Speed Weekend, and they have a flying kilometer course. And so while I was building this thing, I was kind of in touch with, with some of the people that were kind of active um, on social media in, within Speed Weekend, and they were really encouraging me to, to, to bring this thing to Europe. And as it turns out, my grandparents are from Sweden, and so as the time kind of got closer uh, and we kept on working through the logistics of how this would work, I mean, I had to learn about containers and shipping and uh, carnets and you know all the legalities of bringing stuff in and out of a country. When you ship something to a country that's not going to stay there, you know there's rules about when it's got to get out of there. So it's a it is a a full you know process. So uh, it, you know so in 2017 um, we decided to to run in the 2017 event, which required us to get ready in November to have this thing going in, in November of 2016. So it takes about three months to, to get uh, from Minnesota to Sweden, a uh, big 40 foot uh, container, which is what we did. And uh, the sad thing, or let's not say sad, but one of the downsides of, of going to Europe or something, I had just built this thing and I had, even though I had tested the propulsion system and I had set up what I believed was correct for the, the, um, the tracking of the vehicle, I, I didn't, I didn't test it once. The first time I ever drove this thing, I'm in Sweden. And so that was, that was something to learn about. So I'm kind of one of one, uh, you know, trying to learn how to, how to, you know, uh, tune and manage the power of a rocket on ice. And so I've learned an incredible amount of, you know, what it takes and down forces and, you know, the, where I need to have, um, you know, my points on the, on the ice. So anyways, you know, it, things didn't work out exactly the way that I wanted. Um, I broke a steering wheel. Um, I've gone off course. So, but through all that, I've learned it and I've had a you know great time at some point, you know, who knows, I may be back to Europe, but, um, you know, I've, I've taken all I've learned and I'm really excited about, you know, putting up a, a good number here in, in Manawa. My question is, is the distance of the lake, you know, how big is the lake? How long is this run going to take? Um, how much time do you need to stop uh, from, you know, at that speed? And uh, I mean, if you can kind of give us, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, what goes into all that process, because um, I'm sure it's very technical to make sure you stay safe during this right. run. So the, the vehicle is designed to get up to top speed within a thousand feet. So this is a, Sanding start, hard launch, um, almost like a quarter mile drag run, and we immediately stop or start shutting down at about a thousand feet, twelve hundred feet. Um, and so I have parachutes, uh, a primary and secondary. 
and the speed scrubs off really fast. When you pull out a shoot, I can go on, I can almost decelerate as quick as I accelerate. If I, if something, if I'm getting into trouble and I need to get straightened up, I, I pull my shoots. Um, and again, I have two, a primary and secondary. And then I've also developed what I call my pneumatic claw, which is a huge, they're big, um, steel blades that come down and lift up the rear of the car. So the car comes off the ice and it's literally riding on these, you know, teeth. And so that I can go from a hundred to almost nothing in inside of six, seven feet. It's a, it's a dramatic, um, stop. So we've got a, um, about a 5,000 foot runway and we're going to, you know, theoretically we're only going to use half of that. And the other half is there just for safety. You know, if something goes wrong, I, I, I should be able to coast to a stop inside of 3000 feet. So, um, and we've got extra on top of that. So I don't need a lot of length. You know, I, what I really need is a, is a good hard surface that's as flat as possible. What are like the ideal conditions for this? I mean, weather wise, I mean, temperatures that play a big role in it. And it, yeah. So interestingly enough, the rocket propulsion system hates cold. So, you know, ideally you're not running in the winter with this type of propulsion system. So we have to, we have to bring in outside heat. So, but ideal conditions, we, we need um, the winds to be under 12 miles an hour as far as a cross wind would be concerned. And I need perfect visibility, you know, light flurry, because we, we are going to have um, runway markers for the, so I'll be able to see the, see my, um, my borders, let's say, you know, um, the, the track width that I'll be running in was, will be about 40 feet. The runway itself will be close to 100 feet wide. So the car, the vehicle itself is only six feet wide and it's 27 feet long. So provided everything is working right, it, it literally runs on a rail. It, it, this is designed to go straight. And that's really where all my work and science is into the, into the vehicle is just to make it go straight. And I don't have to drive it. I mean, I have to arm it. I have to, you know, activate the motor and do all those things. But the driving should be very, very minimal. Um, it's not made to turn. It's just made to go straight. So let me ask you this question. Um, I know you're from Minnesota and I know on your license plates, I, I don't know if it's still, but it used to say 10,000 lakes. And so I, I guess my question is <clears throat> you have 10,000, <clears> 10,000 lakes and the Minnesota Vikings, but yet you want to come to Wisconsin and particularly Manawa to make your run run. Are you like a displaced Packer fan or have you been excommunicated? And that's why you chose Manawa, Wisconsin to do this attempt. No, but I will say that I am a Vikings fan, but as soon as the Vikings are out of the hunt, I am a, a, a true green Bay fan because I do love the area. Uh, you know, I vacationed here a lot in, in my youth and my kids, we've gone to the Wisconsin Dells, you know, when they were young every year. So, um, you know, I'm a Vikings fan first, but I, you know, it's not bad. Second so best. you take your horned helmet off after the Vikings are out and put the cheese head on. I guess. <laughs> How come? Uh, so why Manawa though? What, well, what? so it's so really, it comes down to Dave and, and kind of the way things worked out. Um, discovery really was pushed. So I'm involved in a, um, it's called homemade astronauts, another show with discovery. And they know about my, my rocket racing. And I was I, in the beginning, I was very reluctant to mix, you know, um, efforts into space with, with rocket racing, even though there's many parallels. And so producers, um, of these reality shows are looking for every scenario they can come up with. And so they, they knew I had the Arctic arrow and they were like, Oh my God, we got to do a show on this. And, and, and I go, well, you know, we got to find a place, you know, so I'm giving, giving them a list of think of requirements to run this vehicle. It isn't just, you can go anywhere. I mean, having a course is a big deal. So they, the producers of that time, they were searching for, you know, somebody to, to create a course for the, the run and they were pushing me for it to go. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And so through those efforts, I found, I found Dave and the snow deal. And so you know, part of my discovery and finding something that's real that I can, we can bring in our team and, and make a run at, you know, it requires site surveys. It requires who's, who am I going to be working with? And Dave was somebody that I could tell right away was, 
He was excited about it. He got it. You know, not when you talk about land speed records, I think there's a lot of people that just don't get it. You know, it's, it hasn't been in, in the mindset of people for a long, long time. Now in the seventies, it was almost everyday news, but so, so here we are today. I'm introduced to Dave. You know, I liked his style. I liked that he was ready to go on it. And I liked that it was a small community. You know, um, I have had other opportunities in very more populated um, areas, and it adds a ton of logistics. You know, um, Bear Lake is a lot of large portion of it is undeveloped. And that's good for my kind of thing, because that's, you know, X number of less dogs I got to worry about. It's less people that are fighting to use that public resource. So I understand that, that this is that, that we're here and we're sharing this with, you know, the community. And so, so, so those were the things and, and every, all the things that are showstoppers, you know, haven't happened. And in fact, it's been the opposite. Um, everyone that I've met has been in open arms. How can we help? And that's, that's what we needed. And, and this is a big deal. I mean, you know, I'm going after a world record and I can't think of a better spot. And, and, you know, the, when I first looked at this site and I, I think more so now, and yeah, I mean, I actually live on one of the best lakes in Minnesota and, but all those things have challenges. So, you know, it's finding the right mix. And I think, I think I found it and, you know, everything is, is a go. So let, let me ask you this question. Um, rocket racing is sure not been limited purely to ice racing. It's been around for many years. You've affiliated yourself with some very famous people who have set records with rocket propulsion. And so just, you know, in a nutshell, can you give us a little bit of that history and world records that have been set by rocket uh, powered vehicles? Yeah, there's been several. And what's interesting is they all kind of they, they actually start in Wisconsin, which is interesting. So my crew chief is Kai Michelson, and he is truly one of the pioneers in rocket-powered propulsion. He's actually brought it. Uh, he was one of the key people to actually bring it into NHRA racing. But rocket racing itself started with uh, a vehicle called the X-1. It was built here in Wisconsin by a guy named Pete Farnsworth and Dick Keller. And it was a prototype vehicle for the Blue Flame, which was a a world record setting land speed car that was developed here in Wisconsin. So as time goes on and the X one was actually sold to a snowmobile company. So Kai Michelson um, had known about the X one and he was actually working at snow pony in Minneapolis. And he convinced the owner of a snow pony that, Hey, we should buy this, this old rocket and put it on skis. And they did. And they called it the Sonic challenger and Kai Michelson got a world record on snow. I think it was the 72 era. And, and then that vehicle was used as a, as a promotional vehicle um, for a number of times. The, you know, as you know, there was all these manufacturers um, of snowmobiles that got really dense. Um, the market did. Uh, Studebaker bought Snow Pony, and shortly thereafter, the thing all fell apart. And Kai Michelson bought the the Sonic Challenger from Studebaker after Studebaker went bankrupt. And then he actually developed the first or the more modern, uh, he took a, dot, a top gas car of that era and then actually campaigned it to bring it into the NHRA through um, a company called uh, Pollution Packer. So um, Kai Michelson, uh, who's, you know, he's actually the person that introduced me to, to uh, Rockets, was kind of the godfather of the whole thing. And he's on my team today and he's safety conscious. And, and um, as a car owner and even a driver, Kai has over 72 national and international speed records. Most of those are from other drivers, um, but he, it's his car and he's, you know, um, he's tuned him. And he, so the bottom line is he knows these things inside and out. And I feel really fortunate to have him on my team. In fact, I wouldn't be here unless I met the guy, because I, I knew nothing about this technology until I met him. So let me ask you this question. No doubt the day of the event, um, 
like you said, I, I really am picking up on the emphasis you place on safety. So the general attendance and the audience out there, they're not going to be able to get up to the car, or the starting line, anything of that fashion. If I want to take my son to go see this car, when and where is that going to be possible? Because I would think I'll, I probably won't get close to it on that day. No, um, absolutely not. So um, there are a couple of planned events. I know that there's a, a planned event in Manawa at the snow or at, at the fire station, maybe a week before. I, I don't know the dates, um, but we're also going to be displaying it at the the vintage derby at Eagle River um, on the the vintage race, and then we're keeping it there for another week for the championship. So we'll have a full display. I'll be there. Uh, hopefully some of my other crew will be there, but we'll have a display and um, we'll have our, our hero cards and stuff that, that we can you know hand out to people. And anyone that's got any curiosity about this, we welcome to come out um, and take a look at it prior to the events. And we'll be at uh, multiple things. Um, and I think, Dave, you'll be able to share that, excuse me, as we get closer to the, right. to the timing. Well... Uh, Justin, we really want to thank you and, and Win TV and 96.3 Radio for inviting us in today. And there's going to be more updates on this as we get closer and more details about the Snowdio. But I guess, folks, keep your, your calendars circled for February 15th and 16th. It's easy to remember. It's always the third weekend in February for not only experiencing uh, history being broken by this world record run, but also uh, full days of racing on both days. And and uh, we've been very fortunate the last couple of years with awesome weather and got the feeling it's going to be a real special day and uh, weather's going to be in our favor again. So please come on out. Uh, it's very uh, inexpensive attendance and it's a family show and we shuttle uh, people back and forth to the parking lot, even right from where they park their car to the racetrack. And uh, Bear Lake does a great job with uh uh, selling of refreshments and hot chocolate and you name it. So uh, again, thanks again so much for hosting us today. And, and please, uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing you in February in Manwa. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming in. And uh, Kurt, I wish you the best of luck and I believe you definitely can pull this off. And uh, thank you for bringing it to Wapaka County because this is uh, a huge event. And I think most people will definitely enjoy this and everybody should come out and check it out and, uh, any more update? Do you know actually by, do you know the specific day that you will be doing this? It, it's targeted for the Sunday, the 16th. Okay. So it's a, it's a two day event. Uh, but in order to really isolate them and, and keep their starting line safe, uh, part of where the lake cross runs, which will be used on the day before that is not utilized on that Sunday. So that gives them more privacy and seclusion uh, away from the crowd. So their target date will be for February 16th, Sunday. And we're actually, I don't know how fine we can tune this, but we're sort of planning on a uh, national anthem and opening ceremony and parade at 12 o'clock. Uh, we'll be racing well before that, but we've selected noon to be the day that we stand for the anthem and salute the flag. And we're going to try to set it up. So right after the anthem is playing, we light the car and send it down a track and everybody is <coughs> on their feet for two, two special occasions. All right. Well, great. Thank you guys so much for coming in here. We really appreciate you sharing this, this really special event with this community. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks again.